Thank you for being with us today uh, at noon today. I'm Karen Fuller in for Journey Taylor, joined by meteorologist Simone Thomas. Simone joins us now with a look at what the rest of the week and today are like. And if they're anything like yesterday, hey, smooth sailing, Simone. You know, Karen, we did have a bit of a cooler weekend than what we've been accustomed to these past few days. So we're going to see more of that sunshine we saw yesterday, but the temperatures are getting even warmer, which is incur I'm encouraging everybody that can to spend some time outside today on this Earth Day. Temperatures already reaching the lower to middle 60s, and we've still got more warming up to do this afternoon. Looking to see highs climbing to the lower to middle 70s today. Plenty of sunshine extending through the day. Now we did have a cool start to the morning, but we're making up for that this afternoon. Those wind speeds are going to be calm as well. So a great day again to get outside, take advantage of the sunny skies because we've got some rain chances on the way coming up sooner than you think that we'll be talking about in that seven day outlook. So stick around. Developing now at noon, new scrutiny on the ATF raid in March at the home of the former Clinton Airport executive. Why the House Judiciary Committee wants questions answered about the early morning raid that left Brian Melanowski dead. In a letter sent today to the director of the ATF, committee chairman Jim Jordan says the circumstances around Melanowski's death, quote, raise serious questions about the weaponization of the agency against Americans, end quote. Malinowski was under investigation for allegedly illegally selling guns. He was shot by ATF agents in March during early morning raid outside his West Little Rock home. According to the letter, the ATF has confirmed agents were not wearing body cameras during the event. The letter requests all documentation of the investigation to be sent to the committee by 5 p.m. on May 6th. The jury hearing the criminal case against former President Trump in New York City is hearing opening statements by the prosecution and the defense in this historic trial. Trump is accused of falsifying business records in connection with so-called hush money in a payment quiet and affair prior to the 2016 election. Jared Hill is standing by outside the courthouse in Manhattan. Former President Trump again claimed to be the victim of a witch hunt as he entered the courtroom ahead of opening statements in his historic trial. What's going on right here should never be happening. It's a very, very sad day in America. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. He's accused of using his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to funnel payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. In their opening statement, prosecutors said Trump, quote, orchestrated a criminal scheme to corrupt the 2016 election. Trump denies any wrongdoing. This is their most important day besides jury selection. And CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman says there's a reason. Studies have shown many jurors make up their minds during opening statements. If you hear a persuasive story and then you hear another persuasive story, you make a decision as to which one you believe. Mm. And if you get invested in that belief, it takes a lot to knock you off. Former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker is expected to be the prosecution's first witness and to testify at about alleged catch and kill scheme to purchase and prevent the circulation of negative Trump stories. Because he has to be here for the trial, the presumptive Republican presidential nominee has largely been sidelined from the campaign trail. I'm here instead of being able to be in Pennsylvania and Georgia and lots of other places campaigning. The trial is expected to last several weeks. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Jewish families worldwide are marking the start of Passover this evening, the week-long festival celebrating freedom. But the holiday has a somber tone in the shadow of the six months of war in Gaza. Passover is typically observed with a feast where families gather and celebrate. But many are anticipating empty seats, representing loved ones killed or taken hostage in October last year. We do it for the people that cannot do it right now. We do all the, all the Shabbat, all the festivities, all, all that we are doing, we do it for them. We pray for them all the days and all the festivities we think about. Uh, he could be sitting here with us. And Israel is threatening a ground offensive into southern Rafah. That's the only part of Gaza where it has not yet sent troops.
Happening now, this is National Crime Victims Rights Week. It's meant to bring awareness to families who've lost a loved one to violence. Local support groups are hosting events to offer resources and comfort. THV 11's Rebecca Brown shows us more. Broderick Buford, Kiara Thompson, Aaron Dunn. Each name called and each picture you see represents someone's loved one that was a victim to a homicide. My son, Trevlin Smith, was murdered in June of 2018, so that's why I'm here today. Sunday is the start of National Crime Victims' Rights Week. So this afternoon, Wendelin Smith Adams, the chapter leader for Parents of Murdered Children, held a memorial for family and friends of homicide victims. This is an opportunity for a number of organizations to come together and to celebrate um, crime survivors, crime victims, crime survivors, at the end of the day, we're still standing. But the grief, it, it lasts forever. Don't let nobody tell you, all oh, you can get over it. You don't. You get through it, but you don't never get over it. Lakeisha Smith is also a part of the Parents of Murdered Children organization. This is my baby, Sean Colvin Smith. He was killed uh, January the 25th, 2014, and uh, he leaves behind four kids. So I have a lot of cousins who have been killed, you know, a lot of friends, and it's hard. It's very hard. Now Smith and Wendelin channel all of their hurt into advocating for change when it comes to violent crimes such as this one. I talk to the mayor, I talk to the city board, I talk to the community, I talk to anybody who want to listen to police to see what can we do different with our youth and our young people because they need a lot of help right now. And we just want to again encourage our law enforcement and our communities to rally around our children to give them an outlet so that you know they have a means of not feeling like they the answer is picking up a gun and shooting an individual and taking a life and impacting again the health of the community. In Little Rock, Rebecca Brown, THV 11 News. The parents of murdered children will be hosting different events throughout the week. If you'd like details, you can visit our website, THV11.com. Today is Earth Day, and the annual holiday raises awareness of how critical it is to conserve energy and promote sustainability. The theme this year is planet versus plastics, and according to EarthDay.org, more plastic has been produced in the past 10 years than in the entire 20th century. The push from the organization is to reduce plastic production by 60% by the year 2040. And if you're trying to practice sustainability by recycling at home, some good news. Glass has not been accepted in Little Rock recycling bins for several years now, but the City Board of Directors has recently approved a three-year contract extension with Waste Management, bringing back glass recycling, along with a slight increase in fees. Clear, brown, and green glass bottles and jars can be discarded in curbside bins, unbagged, along with all your paper, metal, and plastic. Right here in the Pacific Ocean, halfway between Hawaii and California, is the eastern portion of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. At more than 617,000 square miles, it's roughly twice the size of Texas. The western portion is smaller and located closer to Japan. According to the Ocean Cleanup, a nonprofit organization dedicated to cleaning up the world's oceans, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the largest of five offshore plastic accumulation zones in the world. But is the entire patch so big that you can see it from space, like this tweet depicts? Let's verify. Our sources are Nick Malice, Senior Director of the Trash Free Seas Program at the Ocean Conservancy, The Ocean Cleanup, a nonprofit dedicated to ocean conservation, Oceana, an ocean conservation organization, and Google Maps. The short answer is no, you can't see it from space. Here's a look at satellite images of the area where the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is located in the Pacific Ocean. It just looks like blue water from space. Here's why. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch was created by a system of circulating currents called the North Pacific Gyre. The currents pick up some larger pieces of floating trash, but mostly the currents collect large amounts of microplastic debris, or extremely small pieces of plastic. According to Oceana, an ocean conservation organization, even though the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is very large, it can't be seen from space because it isn't one giant mass of trash, nor is it a floating island. Nick Malice, Senior Director of the Trash Free Seas Program at Ocean Conservancy, visited the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in 2010. He says most of the debris is so small that even if you're on a boat in the dirtiest section of the water, it still looks blue. It's only when you get close to the surface and you start to see kind of the, the colorful confetti of plastics that are scattered all over the place. So we can verify, no, you can't see the Great Pacific Garbage Patch from space. 
But just because you can't see the garbage patch from space doesn't mean it's not a problem for the environment. According to Malice, these small pieces of debris are difficult to clean up and can be eaten by pretty much every small animal and organism in the ocean. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Ahead on THV 11 News at noon, a lifetime together born out of a moment of destruction. We'll have this inspiring story after the break, along with the forecast from Simone. It's a beautiful day to get outside on this earth day, but how long will these beautiful conditions stick around? I'll have that answer for you coming up after this break.